thunder. Oh, 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 Smoochie. Oh, 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 welcome back to another episode of Smoochie Town. And before we get to our very, very funny, hardworking, and apparently stylish guest, it's a Smooch of the Week. And we got a disappointing one for you this week, let me tell you. It was my buddy's birthday recently, and it was an absolute extravaganza. And I am a dumbass, and I went out the night before and decided not to sleep. Got into some extracurriculars, yeah. Uh, Just stayed up all night, had some fun, drank some jungle tea, shout out jungle tea. And then uh, we got day drunk again, we continued the party, okay? We went to Laurel Hardware, all reliable, I love that place. And then we went to the hideaway over there in Beverly Hills inside a shopping mall. I don't really know the uh, location decision on that one, but they have great steaks. I was causing a scene there. I was throwing empanadas, throwing chips and salsa. Who knows? I don't remember. And then we get to my buddy's birthday party in the hills. Tons of people, bunch of porn stars. You guys probably know who I'm talking about. And then uh, I brought a girl home back from that party, uh, as well as some other friends and stuff, and we all go back to my place, keep the party going yet again. And uh, we're all just chilling on the couch. There's about six of us, seven of us. And uh, there was no smoochies going on just yet. I never knew what was the vibe. And uh, while everyone kind of went into their own rooms and hung out and stuff, it was me and said girl. And she asked me what her name was. And I didn't know. So she abruptly left, and there was no smoochy town for Marco. And that's the smooch of the week. Oh, God. I should have slept. I should have slept. <laughs> How tragic. Yeah. All right. Now you're going to readjust. Uh, you like that one? No? Hated it. You hated it? <laughs> hated it? Before we get to the beautiful introduction I have planned for my guest, I want to introduce my co host for this episode. Taylor V is back I'm- and ready to get mad at me, apparently. Yeah. She didn't like that smooch of the week. <laughs> not at all. Uh, but that's You're not buff. why we're here. That's not why we're here. That's not why we're here. We're here to interview, to introduce Dr. Brad Padre, also known as Scumbag Dad. Give it up for him, baby! Welcome yes. to Smoochie Town. Thank you so much for having me. I will take any opportunity to talk and get content out of it. That's uh, I like it. I like yeah. it. I like the cowboy hat, too. Thanks so much. I'm going to Young Gravy's party tonight, so I know I won't have time to change when I run a, the additional errands, so... I'm straight up cowboy fitting all day, and honestly, I like it. I love it. I dress like that to the Zach Bryan concert. Mm, as well, you should. As I should. And mm. I thought I had a cowboy hat on, and I asked the cop, like, drunkenly. I was like, hey, you like my hat? And he's like, that's a fedora. So <laughs> I threw done, the fedora out, and I bought done, a new hat. Yeah. yeah, you done fucked up. You got to make it a straight up cowboy I hat. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. There was a feather in it and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what do you think of that smooch of the week? I'm not, I'll ask Taylor after. But I think that smooch of the week sounds very neutral, and I don't know uh anything about it and it seems <laughs> seems like a very reasonable story that any reasonable person would do and it sounds like nobody uh, accomplished any uh ill will behavior and maybe embellish the story for additional clicks so i'm sure the person involved in that story uh is very honest yeah seriously because we we came back to my place and we're all just chilling playing like heads up yeah we should keep talking about it. yeah man you know what idea we should we should should dig the hole more details (laughs) we should dig dig the hole i want to reiterate that no smoochies happened and it's not because i didn't know i it was never going to happen so I have, Brad, uh, I've, I've definitely been very neutral about this particular one, but <laughs> I am, I, I'll tell you how I feel about it. I feel fine about that one. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you back in the day? You forget a girl's name when you bring her home. And yes. She- I've, I've made mistakes. I've actually called a girl the wrong name before and it was very embarrassing and I felt terrible about it as I should. Oh, wow. Calling somebody the wrong name is the wrong move in all situations. Now, Especially when you're butt naked. Uh, yeah, was yes. it during? Was it during? It was, it was right before. Oh. And, and I, I, she got over it fairly quickly, but I'm fairly certain I did major damage and that relationship did not last. Because, oh, yeah. Because I can't blame her. Like, it's basically an indication that I was, you know, even though we, we were not exclusive, it was an indication I was still talking to other people. And I had, I was a couple of glasses of wine in. I made a mistake and... 
Yeah, it's not a good thing. Just yeah. it's easier if you if you aren't hundred percent sure of the name, just get used to saying honey or baby or sweetie. Sweetie pie. Pet names are amazing for that. They're great for if you're a single man dating and you don't know what to call someone, be like sexy, baby. Like you can't go wrong with yeah. that. But if you are gonna say a name, you better don't you better check her ID first <laughs> and just <laughs> Make sure you're on the right call because you're going to make um, mistakes otherwise. I feel like pet names sometimes are degrading though. Like honey, I feel like what am I at a waffle house and you're the waitress? Well, I feel I feel like I feel like it's a bit of a risk. So by by putting a pet name in, you take a little bit of a risk of offending her, but you reduce the risk of calling her the wrong name. So so yeah, I do agree. Like sometimes pet names, especially too early, may seem a little bit degrading. But if you're still a single guy dating around, it's a strategic move because if you, until you're locked into a relationship, you're less likely to make a mistake. You know, mm. like even if you're casual, even if you're casual, even the indication, if you're sort of, let me start over. If you're in a casual relationship, you know you're not exclusive yet, but if you're building towards that, you know, people can have their feelings hurt by any indication that you're flirting with somebody else. You know, I'll tell you a quick story about that. There was a time I was dating before I met my wife where I would send a lot of postcards. I sent a shit, Ooh, I sent shit tons of postcards. What does that because, mean? Well, I'll be, it is the most cost effective way to get somebody to like you and speed up the progression of the relationship. A postcard costs what, 75 cents? But that is worth so much more, it's handwritten. It's sweet. Yeah. You say things like yeah. anybody can buy you a beer at a bar, but to like send a postcard from another city, you got to go to, you got to put that in the mail. It's a physical yeah. item. And then like, you'll put that on your fridge as a girl. Exactly. And, and like, so look at it I day. used to run a postcard game like, <laughs> like no other. I will tell you my wife who I would eventually, yeah, I you know, this. when I was dating her, I would send her postcards from different cities and she was so, so touched and so impressed. But I was, I was actually sending them to a lot of people. Wow. <laughs> At the time, she knows this. This is not a secret, but yeah. like, but you know, it was, I would go on a plane. I would just have a list and I would just write postcards. I would send a lot to my family and friends, but I would also send them to girls I was dating to sort of like, let them know I was thinking about them, which was true. I wasn't in an exclusive relationship. Yeah. There was nothing wrong with that, but I'll, one Big mistake I made is at one, I would get really silly with the postcards. And at one point I was at a famous brunch spot, like someplace that was known for its jam. And I thought I was being, <laughs> I thought I was being so like cute. And I actually like smeared some of the jam on more than one postcard. And I sent them out and, and one of the girls got a different girl's postcard. She, I was like, oh, did you get my postcard? And she was on the phone with me. She's like, yeah. And she's like, who's this? And I'm like, oh, son of a bitch, two of the postcards stuck together. <laughs> no. Oh, no way. Yeah, so so unfortunately, that uh, that, rela that relationship never blossomed in anything, which is totally fair. That's fine. Yeah. But, but, you know, uh, I made mistakes. You know, the postcard, the postcard tactic was extremely effective. And, um, you know, I would eventually marry somebody that I gave postcards to. But, but I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. so I accidentally sent... One girl, two postcards. You're on that PCP. You're that postcard plug. Well, I mean, that at the end of the postcard player. <laughs> I was about yeah. I was a PCP <laughs> uh, postcard. So 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 let that be a lesson to you boys who want to take up that postcard game. Keep away from st sticky adhesives. Yeah. When yeah. you put that shit no in the diners. mailbox, no diners. Because you could shoot yourself in the foot real quick. Um, but but uh, let's see. Where was I going with that? I don't think I was going anywhere with that. That's you, the end of the so story. You're married. I am married. How yeah. long? Uh, I've been married for do, 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 man. I think six years at this point. Wow. Congratulations. Uh, Congratulations. Yeah. No. It's been it's been really nice. Uh, I think it, I think it'll be six years in uh, October. So things have been working out well. We've got a baby who's almost two. Uh, being adorable. married is cool. I like it a lot. Um, I know this is normally like a dating and love podcast. So like normally it's like crazy single people. Oh, lies, love and betrayal, you know. <laughs> and I, I like I can speak to that from my more single days. But as far as like the last couple of years have gone, you know, my relationship with Hannah is very good. Uh, it's awesome. Being married is extremely cost effective. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like I was, I was spending way too much money dating and way too much effort on, you know, talking to girls before being married. And then once I was sort of locked in, it's just an incredible refocus of all my like efforts and finances. You know, people think of me as this like, you know, YouTuber, you know, guy who's also funny, but I was a very different person before I could focus all my efforts into this stuff. You know, yeah. the, the D -d dating is a lot of effort and it may not work out, you know, breakups happen. And so I, I personally am very, very pro marriage. This is, <laughs> this has been working out How great. How did you guys meet? 
Uh, we, we met because I was spamming OK Cupid. I was sending the same <laughs> message over and over and over again. Postcard player, back at it again. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, like dating is, it's kind of a numbers game and it's a little silly to not, it's, it's a little silly to pretend it's not. As a man, you will receive far fewer matches on any online dating site and that's okay. That's the nature of the system. So how do you get around that? So there was a website called OK Cupid, which I don't think anybody uses anymore, but it had a feature where if you paid them, you could click search by hotness. Oh. So you could have it only show you people who were highly rated by others. So now your search results are only populated with like at least moderately good looking people. Okay, yeah. step one. So you, you've sort of skewed the results in your favor. So I would spam the same message to everyone and I would like X out the profiles I spam so that they wouldn't come up on the search again. Mm -hmm. So it was a constantly rotating system of just like sitting on the toilet, spam, 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 spam. <laughs> and it would it worked out great. That's when I think the best, you know. It, it, it worked out great. The number of girls who I met, uh, like I would say like a disproportional number of them, I was like their first message. And it's because I sort of operate on, on this like very aggressive rolling system of spam. Because once a girl of any attractiveness is on one of these sites for a day, a thousand messages are in the inbox. Mm. But if they just signed up and they just finally put up their profile photo and you're the first message and it, and you're like not a dumbass, yeah, that is very powerful. That feels what, good. What was your opener? My opener, well, I would refine it over time. But the one that I finally seduced my wife with was... Uh, <laughs> Hey, you look ducking awesome. Ducking, oh no, autocorrect is ruining my life. I don't feel like backspacing right now. So how's it going? And honestly, it's not like the slickest message in the world. And bear in mind, this was also more than five years ago. So you have to take that with a grain of salt that like the normal spam message was like, hi, hey, where are you at? You know what I mean? Like, like what you doing tonight? Like, I gotta say, you know, even though this tactic probably wouldn't fly, you know, in 2024, it was fairly effective in, you know, 2015, 2016, 2017. Um, so, so that's basically what I said. Uh, my wife uh, would get back to me with a ha 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 ha. She loved the message. And I was like a very early message in her inbox at the time. Uh, and now, you know, many years later, we got married. And now we have a baby. So like spamming can work. And it doesn't mean you're a bad guy. Spamming the dating sites doesn't mean you're a bad person. It means you're simply- You're, you're time efficient. I don't want to waste time. Exactly. Shitty conversations. It's so sad for a man to like find a woman on a profile and be like, oh my God, we have all the same interests. She lives close to me. She seems to have the same values based on like what we listed. She's got a good look. I think she'll like my look. You know, I'm going to like send this message that maybe she'll really appreciate that shows that I showed attention. And the, the idea that it's just one of 30,000 and it will not be read, it might get read. But, but the idea that the odds of it being read are so low, that is unfortunate, mm -hmm. but it's, but it's, but it's the way the, dating game kind of, I feel like will always be played in different scenarios. Mm. So, you know, it sort of reenacts itself with Tinder, the way men just swipe everybody. You know what I mean? Like, like the, the system will never change. It'll just alter its appearance as the dating apps or the dating techniques change. What is your uh, philosophy on, because as a guy, girls don't respond to, hey, hey, what's up? You have to go on their profile and develop a kind of, uh, arsenal of messages that will relate to them personally and make them feel special and like see they have a picture with a dog oh what's the dog's like you have to be more personalized with it but how can you do that to every girl that you match with? well that's the, the thing is i don't think you can do that with every girl that's why it's important to develop a spam message that suits your personality and you just you're gonna get busted for it like a lot of <laughs> girls are gonna know that it's a spam message you simply need to view that as a part of the mathematical equation because a couple of them won't. Mm. And at the end of the day, you know, unfortunately, the idea of sending that perfect message and hoping that she reads it isn't necessarily going to exist. You may not be what she's looking for at the time. She may be busy with other guys. She may have a, she, almost every girl of moderate to high attractiveness I ever met had a completely full inbox. I'd be like, let me see your dating app. Yeah, this is like 4,000 messages. I'm like, yeah, this, Whoa. this sounds about right. I mean, take it. You yeah. know that. That's, that's true, right? Yeah, yours. That's 100% true. Really? Are you yeah. on the apps? Huh? Are you on the apps? No. 
No? No. No, she's not on the apps. She's Have you ever been on the apps? Yeah, I've been on the apps. I'll go on for a day or two, but it's like you said, you just you almost go on there and you're like kinda get what you need from it and then it's so overwhelming that you're like, All right, enough of this. Let me go. Correct. Instagram's the best dating app. I use Instagram for dating. Yeah. Well, there you yeah. go. So, I mean, people have moved on to Instagram. You know what I mean? Like, like times change, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, I won't talk about, you know, I'll talk yeah. about it. If I could, like <laughs> y- 20 years ago, Yelp used to throw parties and you would meet other Yelpers and that became, a, <laughs> that, that became a de facto dating app. Like you could date other people who were into the local food scene. I mean, that's basically over, but really, yeah, Wait, I mean, let's bring like, that back. <laughs> no matter, no matter where we are in life, like there will be sites that aren't dating apps that are used as dating apps. I feel like yeah. Instagram as a dating app. I mean, Facebook used to have like a single or taken feature. Yeah. And so like almost all, I mean, a lot of apps have some little tweak to them where you could meet somebody on the app that you could potentially sleep with. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I know several couples who have met on TikTok. I know several yeah. couples who have met on Instagram. You yeah. know what I mean? Like people, people can meet on anywhere. On, people can meet on any fucking app or any website. Mm-hmm. We met on Instagram. She actually slid into my DMs. Wow. Yeah, I slide and I say the same thing every time. What was the line? <laughs> Fuck you. I don't think you I did that. not. Wait, I'm not the only person that you just randomly slid in and said I'd smash that night. <laughs> you said I'd smash? Wow, you came in with an I'd smash? I said smash. <laughs> That's incredible. So for- you know what? Good for you. That's no, fantastic. no, no. Time out, no, Brad. It's kind Time of out. Like he was saying it's like spamming. So, right, if you're going through your Instagram stories, right? So you could be like, a guy comes up and I'd be like, Smash or pass. But that's a smash. First... <laughs> smash. Next one, pass. I don't like this. I, I, that's incredible. I will say this. First, the first... last co-hosting for Taylor say, <laughs> Hey, you shouldn't be insulted. She picked smash. I know, but yeah. how many others that night? It doesn't matter. <laughs> That's the point, is that she was just playing the same game Amanda does. She was simply spamming it. She said smash. It worked out. Now look the at us, The background behind it, I mean, you know, you could, you could pontificate on that if you want, but at the end of the day, she's simply using a more male-focused tactic, and it seems to have worked. Yeah. Oh. Okay, well. well My I mean- own, anyways, uh, how's this jungle tea, right? Do you like it? I do. I do. Jungle by the tea. way, today's episode brought to you by... It is brought to you by Jungle, Jungle Tea. tea. Uh, it has 30 milligrams of caffeine, so kind of like it's like Celsius meets a little seltzer, mm. so it gets you a little loose, Got also it. a little energized, which I mm. love. Hey, shout out Creators Inc., though. How how good are they? They're very nice. They're I very have, nice. Uh, uh, I've been having and, a very good time hanging out with them. Yeah, and shout out um, shout out Taylor V uh, in her opening stuff. Uh, I'd smash, really? Is that the, Have you said that to anyone since we met? No. <laughs> oh. I believe her. I don't. I'm okay. scared. I have to go to the bathroom. No, tell, tell me how that makes you feel. Does oh. it, does it, wait, wait, wait. This is kind of interesting. Does it make you feel, now knowing that it was a spam message, does it make you feel maybe a little bit objectified? Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. And now like interesting. I responded and so many other guys didn't and you want what you can't have naturally in life. Maybe. So the guys that didn't respond, she wants even more. Have her. you ever considered that maybe you were the top of the list and that other guys also responded well? And that you were selected amongst them. Like, I, I would feel, to, to be honest, like if I were still a single man and a attractive girl said smash and we did that, I would, <laughs> and she told me like, yeah, I just messaged like a dozen guys. I would just assume that I was the pick of the dozen. Like, you know what I mean? Because every guy is going to respond. So think about, also, think about. Also, perhaps uh, I'm embellishing some of the details due to an earlier story. I don't know. I don't know. That sounds like something that you can address later. (laughs) That doesn't sound like any of my business. I'm simply trying to be a neutral party for no reason. So uh, can we get to uh, the name Scumbag Dad? What is that? What's the origin of that? Uh, Scumbag Dad was created because, um, I don't know, a couple of years ago I was at a party and we were talking about TikTokers that we liked. And I was not a very big creator at the time, uh, but my wife talked about how much she liked your Korean dad, who is a TikToker who talked about, uh, your Korean dad would do these very wholesome skits. He would pretend like the camera is a kid and he'd say, hey, I'm your Korean dad, let's go get grapes and he'd eat grapes and then <laughs> the video ended. But but I would start roasting her. I'd be like, oh, you just like seeing a, ni- a guy being nice to the camera? I'm like, why don't, Why isn't it more realistic? Why isn't he an alcoholic? Why isn't he neglectful? Yeah. What if he's What if he's a jerk? You know yeah. what I mean? So the next day we filmed a very quick skit where Scumbag Dad stole a chicken wing 
from you know the kid the, the, the camera and it got like half a million views in a day which at the time was like cr pretty crazy yeah. considering it took no effort to make the video and i was like okay i think i can explore this character a little bit more and slowly the character became more like violent and the, the 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 series like boosted me up to a couple million followers in a very short period of time but then literally like the week that i decided i'm like maybe i should make this more of a career choice uh, I started to get banned, like I got post banned a million times on TikTok. And I'm like, I have to abandon this character because there's no way I can do the story right anymore. Like the story started to take on like a new form because it went from just a simple parody of Korean dad to a more complex concept of sociopathic relationships and parasocial relationships. Hmm. The end goal of Scumbag Dad was to turn the kid into like a violent, heartless criminal. Like the, the whole, the, the, the skits built up to a certain point. And, you know, my wife and I, we went to the Maldives. We, we did a couple episodes there, but the goal after the Maldives episodes was to introduce like a mother character, introduce the idea that like, because scumbag dad was always a criminal and was always a bad person, even though he's fun. And even though he says, I love you and he's nice to you, he's only using you for his own goals. And at the end, the kid becomes like beyond repair. That was like the uh, the end, end goal, but I couldn't accomplish it because I would start to get hit with guidelines violations every week. And part of the reason I make fun of so many people online is, you know, I still have a bitterness towards that. Like I all, I was basically about to have like a thriving career with this character that I was passionate about with. I would only release two videos a week, you know, back in the day because I would put a lot more time into them arranging sets and actors and stuff. But now I just churn them out like crazy because I want to you know, sort of prove something different, you mm. know, so like that was almost scumbag dad's like villain origin story until he did your content. I, now. I would say in a way it's my <laughs> personal. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're absolutely correct. It is. It is the Brad Padre villain yeah. origin story because, you know, I do roast a lot of people and I think a lot of people deserve it, but I probably wouldn't be that person if I just was left alone with my own content. But I was sort of like offended by the, the shifting guidelines and the inconsistencies in the guidelines. I was like, you know what? if you won't let me get away with this thing that you've let me get away with for more than a year, I, I'm instead going to co-opt people that you do support and now uh, completely point out what's wrong with them and why they suck. Yeah, because that's one of my favorite things that you do. Because I think a lot of people will take content in, but they won't actually think about what they're watching and how it's being set up and how oh, yeah. it is kind of fucked up sometimes. It's it's often way more fucked up than the audience is ever willing to imagine. Yeah. And there's a huge disconnect there because the audience, the audience is like sort of trained not to be compassionate. They see people who are in certain states or interacting with somebody at like a Target or a mall. And like, that's just entertainment for them. But they forget there's a real human behind it. They forget that all those scenes required somebody to think about it, somebody to edit it, somebody to post it. And it's those sort of behind the scenes shots or those behind the scenes motivations that I try to focus fire on because I do think a lot of evil is being done. And, you know, obviously this is a dating podcast. We don't have to go into that. <laughs> Anybody watching my content knows my contempt for certain types of content. Yeah. You know, like nobody's nobody's wondering where I stand on certain <laughs> things. But, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, Scumbag Dad originated because I wanted to do, I wanted to make a comment on parasocial relationships through a long running series. It just stuck because I've been too lazy to change it, even though my manager says I should change it because it's very difficult to pitch me to brands. Got you, got you. Yeah. So like, although the videos uh, I, I see and I crack up at, cause it's clearly like your patient, like the, would you take, would you rather have the dollar yeah. or like give it back and stuff? And I think it's like kind of gross for people to like take advantage of someone that actually is homeless for their own benefit. Cause you can, you can sniff it out like the ingenuineness. Well, you can sniff it out because you're an adult with more than one brain cell. But unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, a lot of the audience, you, you sort of can't, you can lead a horse to water. You can't make him drink. It's one of those situations where, where I feel like I'm the crazy scientist in the movie who's got the papers like, no, listen to me, president. This It's very easy to prevent this problem. Here's all the evidence. And they're like, nah, I don't like it. And that's that's sort of like one of the central frustrations I've got. But but yeah, like we're, we're all sort of experienced content creators. Like we we have cameras, we, we film people, we edit. You know, you, you if you make content even remotely well or even remotely for money at any point, you understand the background of it and you can sniff out like this person's full of shit. Mm. You know what I mean? But unfortunately, because unfortunately we're sort of in the industry, we can understand it better, but 
these guys aren't targeting us. They're targeting children. They're targeting adults with very little media literacy, people who have been raised sort of poorly. They just want to see stories of hope. And they're, it's easy to manipulate their emotions and get them to give them to give, to open up their fucking wallets. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, uh, that's where Scumbag Dad is. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, that's where I'll stay for a while just as some like sort of cynical, bitter roaster. I started a podcast with Stanzi Potenza, which is very good. Late to the party. Uh, but Late to the party. Yeah, Go check it out. One. Uh, but uh, I'm still doing other projects, but but my main thing is roasting people. And you are an orthodontist. Correct. I still practice orthodontics in Iowa. Uh, I don't work as often as I used to, but I still love my career. Uh, I'm way different in the office. <laughs> are you? Oh, uh, yeah. New patients will recognize me. And I think I think they're disappointed because I'm so <laughs> I'm just so such a straight arrow in the office. I'm like, yeah. here's what you need. This is it. This tooth. We'll have this one extracted. Okay. Uh, sign here, miss. <laughs> and they're like, you know, some of the kids asked for a picture, but I can see in their eyes they were expecting me to be like a silly guy. Yeah. And I'm 100% not a silly guy once I've crossed state lines. In Has Iowa. anything ever happened in the office or during a visit with a patient in regards of like them hitting on you, you were in their mouth? Like, uh, I mean, not not in the last couple of years. Uh, well, well, maybe but like I do have a, I do have a, I had an adult patient like flirt with me, like a lady who was getting Invisalign and I... I, I was like, eh, well, I didn't do anything. I'm not going to say anything about it. Like, yeah. I just thought it was awkward and I finished the case and that was it, you know, but, but in, in general, like most people know, like a lot of people know that I'm like a happily married man. Nobody really like flirts with or hits on me on a regular basis, which is good. It keeps me, keeps me focused. I feel like when you are happily married or when you knowingly have a boyfriend, like we were talking about the other day, people come out of the woodwork and they sniff it out that, oh, they're no longer available. So now I want what I can't have. And they like, they give you more attention no, in a way. Okay. I will say that is true. I feel like in some scenarios, I get a disproportional amount of attention from girls but it almost goes away instantly because i don't reciprocate at all mm. i feel like uh you know since i meet like so many influencers and actresses and stuff i i feel like the thing the reason they think i'm cool is because my wife supports me you know what yeah. i mean like like this yeah. person that they may th be attracted to is only sort of attractive because because I'm a married man and like I've got everything going for me and I'm optimistic and I'm energetic and and it's because I don't like I don't date and I'm not like a single man like as a single man I'd I'd probably be a waste of space but as <laughs> as a as a married man like for some reason they like hanging out with me because they're also more confident that I'm not going to hit on them yeah that's so, true so yeah. like so like uh you know like a girl will do a skit with me and then it'll go viral and then one of her friends will be like I'd love to do a skit with you and it's because they talk they're like. You know, I will say a good majority of, of women in the creator space, I mean, take could probably speak to this, but a guy will say, let's do a collab. And then he might have, you know, he yeah. might want to make a romantic move on you. That's why he wanted to do the collab. Yeah. Whereas I feel like with me, like I definitely just want to do the collab. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I've, I've heard, you know, through the grapevine, that's like, that's why people message me who, you know, want to do stuff and they're not worried that I'm going to like low key try and sleep with them because I've never done that. And I, I wouldn't cause there's no fucking reason to. Exactly. Where did you lose your virginity? Oh, a shitty dorm room. <laughs> <laughs> Just a shitty, nervous dorm room my freshman <laughs> year of college. Were you soaking? Have you heard of that? Oh, that, that no, I wasn't. Uh, I was, I'm not a Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it was just like a fairly, I think it was a fairly standard sort of like, oh, I don't really know how to move my hips, but I'll figure this one out. Like, you know, I've practiced putting on a condom before, so I'll just go for it. And yeah. it was, you know, more than likely a lackluster experience for her. And I was like, well, at least I got it out of the way. And then her and I dated for, you know, five or six months. And it was, I got, I got better. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Hell yeah. laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie and pretend I was like fucking, you know, Jeremy Johnny Sins. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie and say I was Johnny Sins right out the gate. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I got practice in. What's your favorite sex position? Uh, my favorite sex position is in public. <laughs> in public? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, so this this brings us to we. So we have a segment. It's called Welcome to the Jungle. Yeah. All right. Sponsored by Jungle Tea. Uh, where is the wildest place you've had sex? I have a good answer to this story. Uh, the wildest place is I was picked up from the airport. Uh. I was picked up from the airport. We were just, we had missed each other quite a bit. And LA traffic is very bad. As you guys know, LA traffic yeah. is, is just standstill <laughs> at certain times, especially near LAX. Yeah. And so, you know, it was a little late. There must've been an accident. 
And I was like, I, we can't, I can't wait. Let's just fucking go. And there was like a cop, maybe two or three cars ahead of us. And I'm like, I think we could legitimately have sex in this car and finish before traffic moves. And so that's exactly what we did. In wait, she was driving? No, I was driving. You... And then she hopped on me in traffic. No way. We took like care of business. On? Yeah, like hopped on. We took care of in business in the middle of, uh, I think it was the 405. <laughs> right no way. And it was awesome. And I'm very happy about that. Did you get any looks? I, I wasn't really paying attention, to be honest. <laughs> That's I think I think I was focused, fired. I think my, my attention was like 80% her and 20% like police officer, police officer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that's part of what made it hot is it's like yeah. there is there is a very serious consequence to what we're doing. You know, and I th th moved a little bit so I could lean, you know, take my foot off the brake for a moment. Um, <laughs> but but I I didn't I don't recall getting any looks. But again, I, I truthfully that was is not insane. Well that's that's ballsy. A crazy look. Pun no. intended. You asked the question. I have. Given I the love it. Ironically enough, uh, this one. Uh, whoa. 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 Is it going to wind up on the editing floor? <laughs> commercial flight got a hand job. Oh, oh, commercial flight. That's okay. pretty cool. Commercial flight hey, hand job. Happens, Exit row. Yo, happens all the time. Exit row. Have you heard of the love cloud? What's no. that? Love Cloud. I mean, you might be able to clip this, but Love Cloud Vegas, you pay them to have sex in a private plane. Stop. And it's fantastic. Honestly, I it? love the service. I will, they're not paying me for this. It's fantastic service. You pay, it's not cheap, but it's a, they'll send a limo, they'll give you wine, they'll give you snacks, and you just bang in a plane. It's not a big plane, but you bang in a plane. Uh, we've done it while it's flying? In yeah, the sky? while it's in the sky. My wife and I have done it twice. How long is the ride? Because I have a quick trigger, so three I mean, minutes isn't worth it to uh, me honestly, in the sky. Honestly, like w when you're up there and you know you're paying for it, you make it work. Oh, you know okay. what I mean? Like, you edge a little like, bit. Like you know, you know your you know your money's going somewhere. So you're like, shit, I don't want to fucking, I don't want to ask him. Also, it's embarrassing because like you don't want to ask the pilot to land early. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't want to be like, hey, buddy, can we? Uh, can I get a discount? I was only up there for nine minutes. Yeah. You know? And he's like, well, you booked the full hour, dickhead. <laughs> That's a damn. Okay, yeah. what's it called? It's called Love Cloud. Love Cloud. Can you go with more than like just you and a partner? I think. You, oh, here I we go. Go Bubble with DJ <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> I, I'm fairly certain you can go with. Jesus Christ. I, I would ask them what their max is, but I'm fairly certain they could fit. I'm fairly <laughs> certain they could fit up to four, but I have no idea. Okay. That's something you'll look at on their FAQ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you have any fetishes? Because this one's double BJ's. Oh. I don't know how I feel. I about literally it. just <laughs> said in public, and you're like, "Do you have any fetishes?" I just said it. <laughs> oh no, I'm <laughs> talking about public. like. Is there anything going up that ass? No, I mean, honestly, no, I don't do a lot of butt stuff. You yeah. know, I think I'm fine with things going as they are. You know, I think situational, I think situational stuff is sort of the most interesting, like, you know, elevator traffic, you know, mm. that kind of thing. <laughs> I'm not really, uh, I'm not really like a props guy, if that makes sense. Okay. Like, okay you know, yeah, I feel you obviously, like a lot of my, a lot of my, you know, desires skew fairly normal, you know, cute lingerie. Uh, you know, crazy night out, that kind of thing, mm. you know, but, but yeah, really, really the only thing that kind of may, might separate me from other people is just the, 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 the chance of getting caught stuff. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. Sort of like prohibited areas or that kind of thing. Do you have any tips as a married man of six years, how to uh, maintain that spark sexually? Uh, because I have a bunch of married friends that they're like, yeah, we, we have sex like once a week. One, like it's because it's like we've done everything, you know, but like you seem like you're still passionate about. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know if this I don't know if this is going to count, but I feel like I feel like adding adding diversity in terms of location is good. And I'm not like I, I mean, even just traveling, like going to Hawaii or going to Vegas, like you're in a new room. Oh, my God, we just got in. Let's go. Mm. Um, you know, uh, my my wife does change her appearance a lot she she changes her hair and like she's still the same woman but like it's a totally different look now oh, you know stranger oh, in the sheets so i, I will yeah. i i'm not sure if that counts as advice you know you take that for what you will but i, I will say that you know when she, like women tend to make significant i will say women will tend to make significant changes in their appearance and you know it just it feels like just a different version of her. And I think that that is good. Mm. So, I mean, I'm not saying all the married guys need to make their wives fucking dye their hair. <laughs> uh, once, once we, once, once we did a role play, that was pretty cool. That was Ooh. like, um, where we pretended we didn't know each other. And like, we, we dressed totally differently. Um, but I will, I will say like, that took a lot of effort, like a lot of planning <laughs> because we had backstories and things like, <laughs> Like, you really did act, like, like acting exercise. 
guys on a, took on the characters? No, we took on the characters. I I did like that a lot, but it was it was so much effort and scheduling, like to get the costuming and to rent the hotel. Like, Wait, what were these costumes? We. It was, <laughs> It was, it's for, uh, you know, that's conversation for another time. Okay. okay. I'll just say we pretended to be other people and it was fun. Okay. And this was, you know, years, this was before we had a baby. You know, <laughs> having a baby does alter the schedule a bit because having a child is like, it's very physically exhausting. Like mm. running after the baby and making sure he's, you know, sort of like entertained is difficult. And so that takes a lot. So you have to schedule you know, you have to schedule things differently. Yeah. Um, What's it's still, your... no, go ahead. It's still possible, but it, it takes a lot to be honest. It, it takes a lot of hiring babysitters and getting family members involved. Yeah. What's your ideal date? Like before and after. So before when you were single, Brad out on the prowl, what would be your go-to kind of schmooze date spot after that opening ducking, ducking beautiful? Well, I mean, uh, where would you take the thing is my date my date strategy is still like kind of similar even though i'm married like i feel like if i'm planning a date and i want her to be impressed or i want her to have a good time i feel like movement is a very important item that people forget they'll pick like one bar or one place to have dinner and then they won't have a plan you know what i mean so it's a little bit geographic like you know, geography has to be considered, mm -hmm. but like, you know, back in the day, you know, I would say, why don't we meet at happy hour and then get dinner? And then after dinner, if things go well, there's a dessert spot. I would plan it out so that there's a dessert spot between walking distance. Do you like tiramisu? It's actually a place really good. So the dinner bill is paid, but dinner now, now it's a changed, mm. it's changed spot. Now it's dinner, potentially a bar, depending on what she's into, or, you know, Hey, this place has really great live music. So it's more, I would always think that the best dating strategy, I mean, obviously is depending on the people's interests, you know, if the girl doesn't like live music or if she does, or if she likes hookah or doesn't, like it's important to sort of understand what they like and sort of have, have little, you know, mental backup plans in case she still wants to hang out. Maybe she doesn't, maybe she's got other plans and she has to leave after dinner, which is fine. But if she doesn't, or if she if she wants to go straight home, I mean that's fine. But you should have options. Yeah. There so, is nothing better than a man with a plan. Yes. A man with a plan, I'll stay all night and hang out. One of the first times we hung out, I was gonna leave to go to another party. And I was like, I just came to stop by and you were like, uh, ah, no, we're going to another party. And I was like, another party? Yeah, there you okay. Go. That's why girls like directness. Like yeah. even on like yes. the dating apps, I have my spam right. message of yeah. like, you know what's interesting about your photos. They say what? I say I'm not in any of them, so let's change that. Got it. That's nice. Right? That's a good one because it requires a response. <laughs> and then I'm like, yeah. me, you, mm -hmm. so house 8 p.m. Tuesday. That's yeah, fantastic. See? And then it's done. I'll show up. If you're like, what do you want to do? I'm like, I don't know what I want to do. I'm not going to come. Yeah, d d exactly. You oh, you were say, never going to come. Say, Let's do this. <laughs> saying, saying, where do you want to go? Worst thing. No, kind that... of a rough fucking sell, honestly. Yeah. Kind of a rough sell. You like, tell me. I have to really want to like, hang yeah. out with you to be like, okay, yeah. let me try to make this work with this guy. But if you're just like, I know this super great restaurant. Do you like this kind of food? Let's go here. I'll mm -hmm. pick you up or I'll send the car. We're going. Yep. I'm the, okay, I'll show up. Yeah. I feel like once the relationship is established, like you can have a little bit more play there. You 100%. can be like, well, Hey, let's get dinner. Where do you want to go? And then if they don't have an answer, you can be like taco place. And then they have to reject it and provide an alternative response. Otherwise you're going to tacos. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> do you think comedy shows are a good? Uh... Yeah. I think comedy shows are fantastic. Yeah. They're great. Uh, they're a great date spot for early on. Uh, I do think that a happy hour or dinner should be done beforehand to at least mm. get to know each other. And then after the comedy show, you talk about the comedians. You go to a that's bar what afterwards. You said. That's what she that's, said. That's my, that's yeah, my like, go-to in favorite? New York. It's, yeah. it's such... It's such easy conversation fodder that you you know you don't need to meet them and immediately ask like so how's your dad you know what's your five year plan yeah like <laughs> yeah you don't need to go into those things but but at least if you get along on some levels or even argue on who's the best comedian of the night you might still have something do you have any icks? I mean that's a tough question to ask because like you know I'm a married person I don't really encounter new people with new icks. I mean back when I was dating I'm trying to think if I had any icks. things. I mean, honestly, I'll go first. I can't personally uh, date someone that doesn't uh, like a good like cocktail, like because it's then I feel judged because they don't drink, and then there's something off because I like to drink. Not oh, that okay. it's a problem. I just love like the idea of going to a bar and having a drink or happy hour. Like you no, said, no, that's fair. Yeah, I yeah. Too. I love somebody a craft who, cocktail. Yeah, somebody who flat out doesn't drink. I do understand how that may be a bit of a flag for an ick man to me to be honest i'd really have to think about this one because i was when i was dating i was i know i was pretty open-minded I, I would meet i would date people with like vastly different 
diet preferences or, you know, alcohol preferences or drug preferences. And I would just sort of like go with the flow. Oh yeah. I would just sort of go with the flow. Cause I guess I was just that easy going. I feel like, uh, okay, this is, this is a dumb one. No, it's not even real because I dated. <laughs> I, I was about to say, I, I would think an ick would be when they have like way more pets than they should. Oh um, yeah. Yes, so, actually. so, uh, you know, like if it's a, a, a girl living alone and like the number of pets is like excessive, like here are my three cats, am I iguana, am my yeah. fish tank, am my thing. But but here's the thing, but here's the thing, but here's the thing is that I still dated those girls. Like <laughs> it wasn't even that big an it because it wasn't a deal breaker. So it's even unfair for me to say that because I, I would still like not love it because I'm like, ah, oh, this place smells like cat. But but still, I would, <laughs> I you know, it, it wasn't, a it wasn't a, I never really had any Never really had any deal breakers, to be honest. It's been, it's been a, some time since you have been in the dating scene. Yeah. However, what was the worst date you've ever been on? Um, there has to be one that lingers. Yeah, I mean, that's th like there was a lady who I, I think I was a little bit catfished with her appearance. Okay, uh, which hey, people do that. Um, she took me out. She was she was more physically aggressive than <laughs> I thought she should have been. Uh, and she like took me out, you know, I, I paid for the date, but then she took me out to drinks and then she like, she's like, oh, my house is right over here. And I was just like, oh, oh no way. <laughs> I mean, I, we didn't, we didn't sleep together or do anything physical. I mean, I got there and I, I made up an excuse kind of quick, um, about having to leave. And again, like, it wasn't like she was a bad person. It was just like, I, I tolerated it long enough, but I do feel like you know, if you're going to post pictures online, they should be at least moderately accurate. This person's photos were not accurate at all. And I never told her that. I didn't want to like particularly hurt her feelings. She probably knows. You yeah. know what I mean? She knows and, what she's doing. And I made up an excuse to go. And then she posted like a really mean thing on her Instagram story about like men that night. And then she blocked me. Uh, but I mean, <laughs> oh, no, what a little whore. Nothing, nothing particularly like negative happened. I was just like not interested. And yeah. she was like, she's like, why don't you sit by me on the couch? I'm like, hey. Actually, hey, I'm so sorry. I got a, I got a birthday party, which was true. I did have a birthday party to go to, which I wasn't going to go to if things worked out. But I was like, hey, my buddy's uh, just had a birthday party. It's like a small thing. I'm just going to go out and get a cocktail with him. But hey, maybe we can hang out some other time. And then we left, and then she posted the angry story. And you know, yeah. I, she just wasn't your can of jungle tea. No, nope, she wasn't yeah. my can of our sponsor jungle tea. <laughs> No, but her doing that, so say if there was even an inkling of a chance for you to go out again, her doing that gave you the ick probably. Well, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the Instagram story was was definitely like, ooh, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I there was nothing I could do at that point. I knew I'd probably never see her again, and, and that's okay, you know? But that's, like, when I think of bad dates, I mean, usually people are really nice. I do have a one kind of funky story Ooh, about uh, when I was, when I was dating in LA, this is, this is um like when I came to LA, I spammed the same message over and over. And so I met like four or five girls in one weekend. Like I, I had very good luck in LA for some reason. Uh, one of the girls who I ended up like meeting ended up being the uh, efficient of our wedding. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, way. So like I maintained friendships with some of the girls long term, and like one girl I took out like a, a you know a blonde white lady who was who was very pretty, and we went out to a bar and then it was going okay, and then we passed by an Asian girl and white guy couple, and she goes, "Are you one of those?" And I'm like. What do you mean? Now, bear in mind, I'd never really been in LA. This was my first weekend. Yeah. There's obviously a lot of Asian people here. You know what I mean? There's an entire Korea town, right? Let's, yeah. So, so I was like, "What do you mean?" She's like, "One of those guys who only dates Asian girls. Like white guys. There's tons of white guys who only date Asian girls in LA." And I was like, I was tweaked by it because I'm like, "Well, I'm out here with you. You're <laughs> you're not Asian." And yeah. You know, I never said anything, and she got a little offensive about it. She's like, "I don't." She got a little offensive about it. She's like, "I don't understand why." all the white guys are going out with Asian girls now. Is it because they're submissive? And this is her quote. This is somebody else's quote. She says, is it because they're submissive and their pussies are tight? And I go, I don't really think that's it. And that's a bit of a stretch. And, oh. you know, we know. I, I no was, pun intended. That was a, I guess racism is a huge ick. Oh, that would give me the, if someone said that, that would give me the ick yeah. so bad. But it was like, it was a huge like flip of a switch. Like she was yeah. good mood, good mood, good mood. Then she sees, and I feel like, I feel like there was, some sort of like repressed competition there. There's like, so who hurt you? Something yeah. happened something, in your past. So, something happened where yeah. like you, and then I, I sort of went into, I got into it with her a little bit more. I'm like, I'm like, look, I sent like 
a hundred spam messages. And I, I just searched by hotness. I didn't search by race. Pussy tightness. And I've got like, I've got like, and like you're, you're the white girl that I've gone out with, but I've got like two other, two Asian girls responded and I'm going out on dates with them. Like, I don't know, maybe you should just not be such a dick when it comes to responding to messages, yeah. but whatever. And now look, I'm married to a Korean lady. But the point is I wasn't searching by ethnicity. I was just searching by hotness. hotness. <laughs> So anyways, yeah. so that I guess I guess racism is an ick. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if, if we want to get into the, if we want to get into that conversation. Agreed. <laughs> when did you know that your wife did you say is her name Hannah? Hannah, yeah. Hannah, uh when she was the one. What what that that kind of switch in your mind of uh, like, oh wow, was, I want to marry this girl. It was a pretty casual day. Like at the time I was sort of splitting. I wasn't really living with her, but I was st starting to spend more time there and like leave clothes there. And uh, it was just like a very casual moment in the kitchen when I sort of felt like stronger, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, I don't really need anybody else as long as she's cool like this. I <laughs> as long as no other. I love that response. As long as nothing goes wrong. Like we had already gone through the first like hurdles of like an early relationship. Um, and we were in like a very smooth period where everything was just very golden. And I was like, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, there, there was no like needle in the haystack moment. There was no thing she did. Uh, I was just in her little apartment and we like hugged for some reason. And I was like, yeah, okay. If she's down to marry, I should probably marry her. And then I, I think it must have been like maybe six or seven months later where we started to bring up that conversation very organically. And I was like, hey, you know, we've been going out for like a year I'm not going to propose soon, but like, is this something you may be interested in? She's like, yeah, well, you know, in the event you propose, I, I'd go for it. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm not rushing, but, but this gives me confidence that we can continue the next little while without worrying. But yeah, no, no needle in the haystack moment. It was just a very organic, slow thing. Mm. Mm. Do you watch porn? I do. Do you guys watch porn together? We did at some point, but now we're just too busy. <laughs> the schedule's too crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, to be honest with you, like, like porn for me is when she's not around <laughs> and like the schedule's busy. I got to take care of business before I, you know, like edit a video. Yeah, I have I mean? to, I have to come, especially yeah. like I'm prescribed Adderall. And like, if I take an Adderall, I have to jerk off before I get anything done that I took the Adderall to yeah. do you know what i'm saying no I, i'm 100 percent. i understand like it's still like it's not as frequent as it used to be but like you know there are still times when it when it plays you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, yeah what's your category my category i mean to be honest i am so busy that i just go for whatever home page. Hub recommends home page. i'll scroll i'm like look man i got if, if i don't leave in 20 minutes i i'm gonna miss this other fucking yeah. thing or man i've been up all day cleaning and putting together furniture and like the baby's asleep and hannah's already asleep i want to go to sleep i don't want to spend a lot of time fucking browsing yeah it's busy you know i've <laughs> i've become lazy in my old age i'm like it's it's almost like it's almost like utilitarian if I'm watching porn, like just get this fucking shit. It's a done. chore. It's a chore and I'm I mean, I still finish. like it. It's more fun than dishes. <laughs> <laughs> but but at the end of the day, it is you know, it is just as messy. And and also and also and also if I don't if I don't jerk off for too long, like my performance during actual sex tanks, you know what I mean? Oh like, yeah. Oh, a naked woman touching me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I gotta I got a quick. I got I got to keep. It's like any muscle, you know. You got to. You got to. Yeah, muscle men. Yeah, can't can't get too lazy. Yeah, I get fucked up purposely so I can last longer. No, that's fair. That's fair technique. Yeah, yeah. so I'll be I'll be on like when I'm not with a significant other such as you. Uh, I'll be on page like sixty three of Pornhub, getting real like picky. I think if you don't have time, I think for, I think just excessive amount of amounts of foreplay can sort of accomplish the same goal. Just like an awkwardly long amount of time, like kissing and tugging and doing that kind of stuff. Like if you know you're backed up and you know you're going to bust quick, I would say just do something ultra romantic and like make it last like a way longer time than it should. Because, mm. you know, you know, you're not going to be able to go to the bathroom and rub one out and then come back and be like, all right, I'm in game form. Yeah. You know, that's I don't know if that's do like you a guys married... do that. Oh, my play? God. You know how many times you guys will I go to the bathroom and jack off and oh, then no, come I, back I, and then. Well, Wait, not while she's no, home. no, no, not while it's hap 
No. Oh, okay. Like, no, if no, you, that's if, crazy. If you, <laughs> <laughs> whoa, did I? Was whoa. my language inappropriate? I'm like mid oh. mid hooking up, I go jerk off so like, I can last. No, hey. no, I meant like if you know that you're like gonna bring a girl home and you're gonna hook up with her. Oh, you oh yeah, off yeah, 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 yeah. Off in the bathroom. But I feel and like, then, what, like no, go hook up with her before the date. Before, before the date, the yeah. Date. But then okay, I don't want to go on the date. No, but but I feel like the way we interpreted this is is you thought we I thought you thought that we did it in the middle of it like oh baby let's go let's go hang on let's go to the bathroom right. well yeah if you're like okay I'm gonna I'm bust back. in three seconds you I got that too you bust I got that you, like, too back. no that's what I, I, was I, I can of. usually plan ahead way but 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 okay. I can usually plan ahead well enough where that's not a factor okay um but but if I know I'm not gonna you know if I know I'm backed up by a couple of days then I just try to hit the foreplay technique and. Just okay. make that last uh, way longer than it should, <laughs> and then just disappoint her. <laughs> uh, do you have any questions for me uh, or Tay? How's stand up going? Yeah, wait. I want to ask that. Why aren't you doing stand up? Have you done it? Uh, I've been advised to do stand up. Uh, at the current time, I feel like in order for me to write a set, I would have to like really focus fire only on that, and I, I wouldn't want to screw it up. I wouldn't want to come in half cocked. I feel like the only reason that I haven't tried stand-up comedy is just because I'm so busy trying to churn out the short-form content machine, you know, take care of the baby. Like, for, for every new responsibility I add, I have to subtract an old one. And I just got gym back. You know what I mean? Oh. I just got working out back. Oh, hell yeah. And, and I know that if I started writing a stand-up set, going to the gym would be the first thing cut out. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, being a good dad and a good husband, like, being a good orthodontist, like, these are the things I take priority. And, like, content creation is taking more and more time. The podcast with Stanzi. Like, in order for me to s truly sit down and write a set with no distractions, I mean, honestly... It will happen in the future. I just need a little more fucking free time. Yeah, because you got it. Let yeah, me tell you, just like talking with you, the improv, the wittiness, that's why like the crowd work, you'd be impeccable and you're intelligent. Thanks. Like you said five words on this podcast. I have no idea what they mean. <laughs> oh, bludgeoning? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I bet I could guess what they were. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because she does have good memory. But yeah, you have, you have one, you have a great look, mm. for, but like you literally have the humor for it. So I think it would be um, a disservice if you don't at least try it. Well, I'm glad you answered the question about your stand-up comedy by giving me compliments. Yeah. <laughs> it's very it's cool. going well. It's going well. Yeah, Booking I... more shows, thankfully. I'm actually going to Fort Worth with Uncle Laser. Uh, 16th and 17th of this Is month. Uncle Laser related to Major Laser? <laughs> uh, no, you would think so. I, just, based I, feel on... like, I feel like it's sort of in the same genre. Whatever. What do I know? Uh, but yeah, so uh, it's going well. I have a few shows a week, every week, which is mm. good and stuff. So, uh, hey, how's your dating life going? Yeah. My dating life's okay. Okay, it's you seen good. anybody? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. I am. I have a boyfriend. Oh, what? Yeah. Crazy. Oh, wow. That's crazy. I know. <laughs> I never knew. I know, <laughs> right? Crazy. What's his fucking name? <laughs> Wow. Well, maybe one day you'll talk about who he is publicly. <laughs> Smash. 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 Uh, wait, oh. so Uncle Gravy, how do you know Uncle Uncle G? Uncle Gravy. Young Gravy? Young Gravy. Oh, Uncle Gravy. I, I was just invited to his party by someone else. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't know him, but I'm hoping to meet him tonight. You know what I mean? Like, I, I view myself as a bit of a fungus. I, I make friends and then I, I <laughs> breach... Gravy. I breached their friend groups pretty quickly. Oh, I was at a game night and we were all like, how did we kind of get together? And we realized mm. that you were the person who brought all of us together. Was that Savannah? You were saying that. Uh-huh. That yeah, was at Savannah's. Savannah's and it was me and like nine people and we're all like, scumbag dead, scumbag yeah, dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You also showed me some songs. Yeah, oh yeah, wrote we wrote some songs together. together. Boyfriend yeah. dick. Yeah. Boy I still got Boyfriend to record dick's them. good. Boyfriend dick. It slaps. Yeah. Thanks. The lyrics. <laughs> and then there's Grammy the fuck award winning. Boy one. Yeah, the fuck boy one too. It's I, almost like I knew what I was gonna get myself into. Boyfriend yeah, dick and a fuck boy. Crazy. Five and a half. I manifested <laughs> I this. <laughs> what are the odds? Who knows? Uh, but we took way too much of your time. How can we find you on socials? So, uh, yeah, basically, if you just search Scumbag Dad, you'll find it. It's the Scumbag Dad on TikTok, Scumbag Dad Official on Instagram, and just Scumbag Dad on YouTube. Funny story, it used to be your Scumbag Dad on TikTok, but they made me change the name, and they eliminated my hashtag. So when people are asking me, like, oh, why'd you stop the Scumbag Dad series? I used to have a hashtag, your Scumbag Dad. It's, it's blocked. Wow. You, it doesn't exist. How can exist. you do, how that's, can that's, do TikTok that? TikTok operates behind the scenes in a lot of weird ways. And so, and one day, I woke up and my my name was changed. It was just like a bunch of random characters. <laughs> like, and I was like, how is this possible? They're like, you have a violation. You can't change your name for 30 days. So for 30 days, I was like, Josh has fun, 9926. <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't do this. I woke up and and the the your scumbag name, dad name was like gone. 
Like people think I'm joking when I say, you know, I do understand TikTok has to keep their moderation guidelines, but but the sad part is they'll never really tell you why and they yeah. could screw you over at almost any time. And like, I can understand you got to keep things safe, but just like, tell me what part of the video did it. If you're going to make me change my name, just like, this is, this is part of my, this is a big part of my life now. I, I want to follow the rules, but it's tough to do when you don't tell me what they are and they're enforced arbitrarily. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, anyways, if, you, if you, anybody watching this, they're probably going to see my name at the bottom on the collab post and I'm going to talk him into sending me some verticals for my YouTube. So you'll know where to find me. I love it, baby. <laughs> I want to thank Taylor V, the best co-host in the biz, uh, despite the whole smash spam stuff. Cheers, uh, right. Yeah, cheers. I don't know. I think you guys will get through it. <laughs> Shout out Jungle Tea Creators Inc. for producing this bad boy. My producer is Cy. I got to go right now. Thanks, guys. Okay, bye.